I'm home watching my nature documentaries. You know, I love, I, I still have my nature preserve out back with the squirrels, the cardinals, the blue jays, the doves. So it's going very well. Anyway, so everyone's been asking for an update on my situation. Um, of course, you guys saw me in the hospital for a month and I got so much love, so many gifts, flowers, edible arrangements. It was overwhelming. And I really, let me tell you something. I really appreciated every single thing, every single visitor, every text, every call, every message. I'm still getting, I'm still looking through my phone and seeing messages from when I was in the hospital that I've overlooked from friends that I've had forever. Like, and I'm still just getting back to some people because honestly, going through something like that, you're not worried about Instagram. You're not worried about your phone. You're not worried about shit. All you're worried about is trying to stay alive. And I had five surgeries in five days. Then I was in a medically induced coma for two days. That's where this scar, it looks like a hickey. It's not. <sighs> anyway, they got out of a boyfriend right now. Cause I'll be like, no, it's not a hickey. Like they'll be like, oh, Mari, the, remember the guy that said the roach bit him in the neck? Anyway, I can't, I can't. And she believed it. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, I can't. So anyway, um, the food was worse than prison food. Um, it was just horrible. So for those of you that don't know what happened, I had caught a blood clot in the artery that goes through your liver. It's called deep vein thrombosis. It's very rare because most people get blood clots in their legs or their lungs. And a lot of people die from blood clots because you don't know you have one. So people ask me, well, ha people have been really asking me about this because they're concerned. Um, I, I was, my birthday, September 7th, I was on the yacht, ass out, ah, uh, ah, uh, fun, turning up. I was perfectly fine. A few days later, I'm getting chest pains and pains in my side. And I didn't know what it was, and it kept getting worse. I'm on YouTube trying to self-diagnose. I'm drinking water. Ah, ah, ah. Nothing. It got worse. So I called 911. I was home alone at 6 in the morning, and I took off all my jewelry and shit. I put on some sweats, and I went out and sat on the steps. I texted my homegirl, go get the pets. I'm going to the hospital. So I knew my dogs were fine. And I didn't realize I was going to be in there a whole month. I didn't know this was so serious. I could have died. So, um, I was heavily medicated most of the time. So I haven't had a chance to personally thank each and every one of you who sent gifts. I mean, amazing. Like the love was like, wow. Um, so, you know, um, I fought and I fought like I wasn't giving up. Come on. Um, I've come, I've had two other near, near death experiences in my life. Um, but we're not going to get into that right now. We're going to talk about this because this was just recent. And I, I encourage anyone, if you even think you have a blood clot, go get checked. If you have cramps in your legs, a lot of people get them in their legs and they go up and move towards your heart. Or they get them in their lungs and they go into your heart. You know what I'm saying? So it's no joke. Lots and lots of people get these. And it's couldn't be caused by a lot of things. It, it doesn't even have to be caused by anything. Like We don't even know what mine was caused by. Um, so we're still figuring that out. It's, I'm still going to follow up visits. I'm at the surgeons. I have, I had three surgeons working on me at one time. One surgery was five hours. The next day, the one was six hours. Um, those were the two main ones. And then I had three other ones. Um, but honestly, I'm just glad to be alive. Like, cause all I could think about was getting home to my pets and my friends and my family who I do have, I have a brother, I have um, two nieces, you know, that do care about me. And I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not ready yet. Like this ain't my time. No, I'm not giving up. So I'm happy to be, you know, I'm just happy to be here. Like I'm watching my little nature stuff. I'm home reading books. I don't really even, I'm not ready to go out around any crowds. Um, I can't really, um, I can't get bumped into because of internal bruising, internal bleeding if I fall. I have to be very careful shaving. I can't cut myself. Um, it's just kind of like a little bit living a little paranoid now. And then the first week home, I was having fucking major anxiety because I just came from that shit. And I'm like, oh my God, is it going to come back? Am I going to die in my sleep? Oh my God, like, are these pills working? Because they got me on blood thinners twice a day. So I'm no alcohol. And I honestly don't miss drinking at all. It dehydrated me. It made me gain weight. It made me fucking act stupid. I'm glad I never got a DWI. I haven't driven in two months because I'm still 
not ready to drive. I'm still healing. Like, I'm tender. I'm delicate. So I have friends over or I just go out to eat. That's it. Um, or I go to the store. That's it. But nothing where, I, no crowds. I'm afraid somebody's going to knock into me and shit. And then I got to go back to the hospital. So, yeah, it's some adjustments. There's no dietary restrictions. Just the alcohol. Um, so it's not that bad. So I, um, you know, really been doing some thinking. And I'm like, wait a minute. What could have caused this? Because the surgeons, these are really great doctors and surgeons and everybody that worked with me cannot figure out how this happened to me. They've tested me for everything known to man. Every lupus, every diabetes, everything. Nothing, is, there's nothing. My liver is perfect. Everything is perfect. I don't smoke nothing. So where did this come from? We don't know. So I, I'm sitting here thinking back. So I'm like, wait a minute. What did I do different before this happened? I was taking a supplement, which I'm not going to say what it is or anything because it's not confirmed yet. Um, every morning for about a month and a half, two months that everybody was recommending, you know, this and that. All this shit, you know, too, for the coronavirus. Um, so I'm pouring all these, you know, nutritional things in my body. Obviously, I'm thinking... Because when I Googled the main culprit, which I can't say what it is yet, um, immediately what came up, it causes blood clots and thrombosis. So there's no no coincidence there. So I'm thinking me, me taking this shit every morning was not digesting in my liver. Like it's protein and enzymes. So my body wasn't breaking it down. And I'm pouring it in and pouring it in every day. Hello, we caused a traffic jam down there. Hello. So, you know, it's blocking the oxygen. I could have just dropped dead. They told me, if you, if you didn't come when you did, a lot of times they just find people dead or dead in their apartment days later if they live alone. Like, that shit scared the hell out of me. I'm not going to lie. So, I have a whole new perspective on life. The priest came and gave me my um, last rites of anointing. It's scary. I'm really like, yo, thank God. You know what I'm saying? Like, thank God for Dawn. Um, and thank God I'm home. Like I can't even sit. I'm not, and I'm not turning into some religious fanatic. I've always been a, be a, a believer in God. I've always read my Bible. None of that has changed. Um, I'm just back more in touch with my spiritual side now because I really went off track out here fucking around with different people, um, getting drunk, um, going to clubs just fucking spending money on shit I didn't need all the time. Just stupid shit like, hello. It was like God saying, come back to me and get your shit together. Okay? You're better than all this. You don't need to be doing the shit you're doing. And I agree. I haven't not been living up to my potential at all. And this put things back in perspective. Like, wait a minute. I got a second chance at life here. And I'm making sure I really figure out what my plan is and I'm going for it. So that's why I can't have any distractions right now. I don't want no fuck boys. If I do date someone, he's got to be about something. He got to be about his money. He's got to be focused. He's got to be someone that encourages me and I can encourage. You know what I'm saying? Like positive shit. I'm not having no drama with these motherfuckers no more because I can't take it. I, I can't. I'm too old for the shit. Okay. Um, you're not going to have me all ah, 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 and ah, ah, ah. No. Um, so I'm confident that the good, the good guy will come eventually. And I've dated some really nice guys, um, this past year. Um, and I dated some shitty ones. So it's trial and error. Like I posted in my story earlier, not every guy is going, not everyone is going to be the one. Um, you know, they show you who they are before they even tell you, you know what I'm saying? So, um, like, wait a minute, remember the guy that asked me for the $7,800? We never even, no, I think we kissed once. I'm like, hello, what do you, you think I'm stupid? And he had four cars. He was picking me up every day in like a different car and he had mad money. And uh, you're telling me you need $7,800 to um, pay your platinum Amex, which he always will pull out a lot of money in a platinum Amex when we went out to dinner. So are you fake bowling or like, what the fuck is that? That you need to ask me indirectly. He hinted. That he needed $7,800. He made it $7,800, not $8,000. I guess he wanted to soften the blow. He didn't like what I had to say. I said, well, 
hmm he's like damn yeah i'm fucked up right now and i don't know what i'm gonna do i said well maybe you might want to consider selling one of those cars babe because you don't need four cars who needs four cars right he got mad quiet on the phone he's like oh i could hear but this is the shit i used to do to guys when i was younger to ask for money it's the same fucking spiel bullshit oh i need money for this i don't have this can you help me with that i felt like i was the trick i was like no trick I, what, what the what? Hello. We never had sex or anything. He was fine as fine. When I say fine, I mean fine. Tatted up body, the beard, the jewelry, the outfits. Ah, ah, ah. Fine as fuck. But mm -mm. don't ask me for no money. So, especially we're not even having sex. I, I, that's just, that was a turn off. I, I wasn't raised like that. I'm sorry. So I um, ignored him after ever since that phone call. He texted me the next day. Hey, baby, good morning. I got the good morning, good night text. Oh, he laid it on thick. And I'm sure he did like me. But I never went to his crib. I'm sure he lived with a bitch or baby mama or wife. Who fucking knows? Somewhere far away. Whatever. I really didn't care because I was busy at the time in the city every day um, working. So that was whatever. But that's just one example of one of the fuck boys that I dated like last year, within the last year. Um, we're not going to get into all of them. It's like whatever. And, and then I've met incredible ones, but then they live far away. So whatever's meant to be is going to be. I'm not even, listen, we make plans and God says psych, bitch. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't tell you what's going to be planned tomorrow. It could be something completely that I've never even thought of. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm not worried about a man. Like, that's the last thing on my fucking list. Like, most of my girlfriends are like, oh, my God, I want a man. I want a boyfriend. I want a husband. Man, I can get that any time. All I got to do is walk the fuck outside or go on my DMs. I'm worried right now about me healing, okay, physically and mentally because that was traumatizing. I'm always going to have that weighing over my head that it could happen again, which, God willing, I'm not even going to fucking speak that into existence. It's going to go away, and I'm going to get off the blood thinners, which have been suppressing my appetite. I lost weight, which I don't want to lose too much weight. I look good now. Like, I'm happy at this weight. I'm by no means small. Um, but I didn't realize how, how big I was before I, until I got to this. Now, everybody, like, everywhere I went today, guys were trying to holler and talk to me and all that more than before when I was thicker. Does that make sense? Um, so it is what it is. But it's better than me taking a medication that's going to swell me out and make me fat. So I'd rather have one that, you know, my appetite isn't as big. But I'm eating and shit. You know, it is what it is. So that's the update. Um, my priorities are back together. I'm happy not drinking. I'm happy not liking anyone right now. Um, I've been reading books. I've been watching documentaries. I've been writing. I've been watching my um, inspirational religious videos. Shit like that. I've been back in touch with God, man. Like... It's, you know, you get so much far off track and then it's like people want to cry out for help when they're in a, a jam. Oh God, help me. Help me this one time. No, it should be every day. Don't just call on him when you need help, when your ass is in a fucking jam. And I found that's what I was doing a lot. So, you know, um, that shouldn't be the case. So anyway, that's the update. And once again, if I haven't messaged you back in my texts and stuff, it's cause I haven't, there's so many messages. Like I love you guys. So it's amazing that um, I have so much support. As far as the YouTube channel, Martin's classes, my, Martin's my intern. Um, his classes are done soon, so he's going to be helping me. Martin's an engineer. I don't even need an engineer. I mean, I got everything, but I got to get him to hook up the little, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, I got the microphone and all that. And I think I'm going to do it right here on my couch for the, the podcast and the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is going to be a little bit of everything, like, Beauty, pets, guys, everything. Outfits, whatever. Books, um, whatever. The, that's going to be more tame. But I got this fuzzy from this pillow. The podcast is going to be a lot more X-rated, R-rated. Sexual, relationship, dating, love. Real shit that people talk to me about all the time. Um... I used to have my own column in Hip Hop Weekly called Love Talk with Chrissy Monroe. And, you know, writers would write them for advice and stuff. So kind of something like that. Um, so nothing, no topic is really off limits. Um, 
And, you know, because people really are looking for answers. And a lot of people um, are stuck with the wrong person or looking for the wrong person or trying to make something into a relationship So because they don't want to be alone. you got to learn how to be by yourself before you can be with anybody else. I'm fully content right now in my crib watching my little miniature ant videos. And I got all my stuff. I got shit to do. So... If I find someone that I like, he's got to compliment my lifestyle and understanding. He's got to be very confident in who he is and not jealous because, hello, everywhere I go, people want to take pictures or talk or whatever, you know, say hello. And I'm not a, I'm not an, I would never say no to somebody. Like, I'm not a nasty bitch like that. So I'm very friendly. But some people take that friendliness too as me being too friendly and they get a little stalkerish or out of control. And that's scary. So it's a fine line between being friendly and being too friendly. You know what I'm saying? Like, hi and goodbye. Oh, you know. And then if you're not too, if you're not friendly, that's, oh, she's a stuck up bitch. They're going to talk about me either fucking way. So whatever. All right. I'll take it. Whatever. So it is what it is. Everything is good. So that's the update. I'm home. I'm healing. I'm delicate and tender, like a little smushy. Um, I got to be very careful. And... I don't really care. I don't really miss outside right now. I go out to eat and that's it. And um, have company come over and I, I'm good with that. So everybody, thank you. Um, but if you even think you may have any kind of anything, go to the doctor, man. Like, you don't know. I didn't know about I didn't know I had a fucking blood clot. Like, how do you know you have a blood clot? You don't. So thank God I just listened to myself and went. So thank you guys um, for even asking about what's going on with me and the love. And yeah, I just fought it. I stayed strong. Like, I wasn't ready. I was like, it's not my time. I'm not going. Like, <laughs> people need me. My pets need me. Um, you know, I'm just getting started. Hello, building the empire. Hello. So, bye, everyone. Yes, and continue serving looks. So, we're getting that together. Serving looks website is up, but we're still getting everything together on there. This was a major setback, but guess what? It's a bigger comeback. Hello. And I got the book and all that coming. So, it's just a lot. So, mwah. but I'm not, what I'm not doing right now is forcing myself to overdo shit and stressing myself out to get my ass back in the fucking hospital. So everything a little bit at a time, one, one day at a time. And that's it. So everybody have a good Sunday night. Mm, bye.